watched the show about the universe last night and the scientists who were interviewed spoke about the universe with such great awe. I mean, it's, it's magnificent, it's huge, it's, it's an amazing place, there's no question about it. But what about the God that created the universe? He also, along with creating the universe, did something else that was wonderful, and that is he, as well as speaking the universe into being, he spoke into being, if you will, this book we call the Bible. God literally spoke to people who wrote the Bible down, and that's exactly what Scripture tells us. Let's go to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. Verse 16 reads, all scripture is God breathed. I love this translation in the NIV. That's really true. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for, and then it goes on for things it's useful for, but that the, 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 the God of the universe, the same God that put the stars in space would speak this book to people who then wrote it down. What a treasure we have in the Bible. What a magnificent thing to have in our midst. And yet, so often the Bible as a document, as, as a, a spiritual thing among us, gets treated so lightly. And I mean, one of the evidences for the fact that the Bible is pretty not, not treated well is that the average person doesn't spend a lot of time reading it. It's, you know, you take one of these astronomers, they may spend, especially if you're an astronomer, you may spend 10 hours a day studying the universe. And actually, if you're in the sciences, if you're a biologist, you're studying God's physical universe. If you're a zoologist, if you're in, in medical research, you know, the, the people like that spend their whole life, you know, 10, 12 hours a day studying God's creation. We have God's creation right in front of us in the Bible. All scripture is God breathed. And there are people that say, oh no, the Bible isn't the work of God. The Bible is, is written by man. That's not what the Bible says, and that's not the testimony of the men and women who have worked it. And one of the things we do in Spirit and Truth Fellowship is we look at all the evidences that the Bible is true. But I think it's just as important, and this tape is not about various evidences the Bible is true. We do that in other tapes. But I think we need to be clear about the fact that the God claims that he wrote it just like he does here in 2 Timothy 3.16 where he says all scripture is God breathed. If we go to Peter, 2 Peter please, chapter 1 verse 20, it says above all you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. Now why would you need to know this above all? Because if we understand above all that this is God's book, then we'll read it and we'll obey it. If I think that, you know, this is just like man's book, you know, honestly, it wouldn't really, if it was man's book, what, what would make it better than, say, just reading Shakespeare or, you know, reading some modern author or, for that matter, reading the comics on Sunday? If it's man's book, it's man's book. Man can only go so far. But if it's God's book, then I would put my time into it, my energy into it. I would try to learn what it was saying so that I could, I could live it and obey God. And that's exactly what we should do. And so I think it's great the translation, the NIV translation of verse 20 starts out, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of the scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. To understand this verse properly, we need to know that the word prophecy is not just foretelling, telling about the future, but it's also forthtelling. A prophetic word can be about the past, the present, or the future. So when men spoke from God, that's prophecy. And, and the scripture says, this prophecy, this book, never had its origin in the will of man. Moses never sat down and said, oh, you know, I better write uh, the history of, of the world before everybody forgets it or something like that and then starts writing in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. No, no, no. God spoke to Moses and told him exactly what to write. And this is repeated throughout the, throughout the Bible. 
uh, Galatians. You know, the people, the Apostle Paul was in communion with Jesus Christ who was giving him revelation. God and Christ were giving Paul revelation about what to write, just like they'd given Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Malachi. You know, they were speaking to Paul. Some of Paul's uh, detractors, if you will, some of his opponents were coming against that. And so the Apostle Paul had to address it directly. In Galatians, the book of Galatians, chapter 1, starting in verse 11, Paul writes, I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preached is not something man made up. I didn't receive it from man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. This is the testimony of the whole Bible. The whole Bible says that it was written by God. I mean, if you, if you go through and read the scripture, the number of people that say that they wrote from God, it's, it's all the way through the scripture. I mean, Moses in Exodus 19.3, Joshua in Joshua 1.1, Samuel in 1 Samuel 3.11, Solomon in 1 Kings 3.11, Job in Job 38.1, Isaiah in Isaiah 6, 8-13, and I could go on, but all you have to do is just read the scripture and see where, where God spoke to people. Now, I've heard people say, but that's not really the way it happened. Wasn't, wasn't the Bible passed down from word of mouth generation after generation before it was written down? There's no evidence of that. There, there's absolutely no evidence for the fact that the Bible was passed down from generation to generation and then eventually written down. The evidence instead is just exactly what the Bible says. That God spoke to men who wrote down what they said. Absolutely. And you know, the people around the men who wrote down the scripture, the men around them knew that those were holy men in communion with God, which, by the way, is exactly why we have these books. I mean, it's possible, for example, that the book of Job is 2,000 years old. We know that Moses was writing about 3,400 years ago, and these works are carefully preserved. Now, this is important because if we go back to the time of Solomon, now Solomon lived in the 900s BC, so we're talking almost 3,000 years ago. But look what he writes in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and he says in verse 12, he says, Of making many books, there is no end. This is 3,000 years ago, and Solomon writes, of making many books, there is no end. Great, there's a lot of books. Where are all those books? They're gone. How many of those books do we actually have today? Like none. <laughs> Why? Because nobody bothered to preserve them. Because people knew that they were just works of man, and eventually they were lost. Some of them were kept, for example, maybe in the Great Library of Alexandria, which burned to the ground. We lost many, many thousands of, of wonderful works. But the point is, we didn't lose the books of the Bible. When God spoke to men, other men and women around who were holy men, who were godly people, knew it. And they preserved those words. And they kept those words. And the evidence of Scripture is that this book, this Bible, is exactly the words of God. Now, were Things that God did pass down from generation to generation by word of mouth? Sure they were. Sure they were. There, many, many cultures have a creation story. Many, many cultures have a flood story. Um, many, many cultures have some kind of fall of man type of story. Um, but these are not as... the and, the and you can tell. They have been passed down from generation to generation. They've lost details. They've become warped. They've become distorted. Not so the word of God. This Word of God is authored by God, and it's, it's as wonderful, as amazing as the universe above it. And we need to give it the time and attention it deserves because this book, God gave it to us so we would profit and be blessed by it. And we can be if we'll give it our time. Thanks so much for watching this video. And if you'd like to contribute to making more videos like this, then please do so at truthortradition.com slash donate. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button below so that you'll get notices of future videos. God bless you.